All right, so um, you've done your system diagrams now. And as I said, the, that really shows a broad overview of kind of how the system connects together in the sense that this plugs into that and this plugs into that. But it doesn't really show the mechanics of how that's pulled off. And that's really, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna run into problems with either sound system, most of the time it's gonna be in some sort of interconnection. Connector is gonna go bad, or you patch something wrong, or you know, that's the the, the most common point of failure is at the interconnection. It, the equipment itself tends to not break. Okay, it just doesn't. At least, I mean, it's all the stuff's made pretty well, and it's most of it's all digital chips, and they, there's no moving parts. It's not it's very few things that can break these days in sound equipment, aside from the connectors. <laughs> Because the connectors are the things you're manipulating all the time. Uh, you're touching them all the time. You're wiggling them all the time. So those things are going to go bad. And in any, you know, average size sound system, you could have hundreds of connectors, thousands on, you know, a larger system. So you've got these things that are really likely to break, and you've got hundreds, if not thousands, of them in your system. It's a very sort of precarious situation we put ourselves into. Uh, so it should would be, sure would be nice if you knew where they all were. Uh, and it sure would be nice if you had some way of figuring out and documenting how it was accomplished. And that's what a patch plot is designed to do. Now, um, what I'm going to show you is, you know, an incredibly detailed patch plot, which is probably not something... Um, Probably not always going to have the time to go into this level of detail. Um, while you're in school here, I'm going to make you do it because I have that power. <laughs> um, and it's a good intellectual exercise for you to get into. But uh, in the long run, you're probably going to do a simplified version of this. You know, you're going to find spots of your sound system that have complicated interconnections. And you'll create a patch plot for that and then tape it to the side of the rack <laughs> so that you know what connects to what. Um, but the idea behind a patch plot, the way I'm going to show you, is a patch plot should show every single connector in your system. Okay? If there's a connector in your sound system, it should show up on your patch plot. This helps you in two ways. First, it helps you figure out ahead of time how everything's going to plug up so you know what sort of cables you're going to have to get and what sort of adapters. It forces you to figure it out ahead of time. Uh, because there's all kinds of things you sort of assume, you, you're pretty sure that, you, like, well, that mixing console, I'm sure, has XLR input on it. Well, some of them don't. Or some of them do, but you can only use them for microphone level connections and not line level connections or, you know, whatever it is. And so if a lot of times those assumptions can get you in trouble, uh, and then you find yourself in a load and you don't have the right cable. So um, let me talk you through how this works. Now there's, a, there's some color coding that we've kind of all agreed on and it just helps break up the drawing a little bit, make it a little easier to read so we know what, what things are what things. And, you know, these colors only mean something if we all agree on them and use the same ones. Okay, if, if you start using your own colors because you find a, a fuchsia that you like better than mine or whatever, then suddenly the colors lose their meaning. Okay, so you can try to control your, your passions about color and, and just let's all use the same color, okay? I know it makes you feel like, you know, a minion or something, but like, let's use all the same color. Uh, so let's, let's go through this. Uh, I'm just going to take you through uh, maybe the sound system there and the thrust, okay, which is very similar to what we have in the Kataba. So we would start with a CD player, right? So I'll just say we've got our CD player, okay? And on the output of that CD player, there are RCA connectors, two RCA connectors. So um, well, I'll put them out here. So RCA. And this would be a female connector, so I'd say F. There's two of them, R RCA female. And they have labels on them. 
it's probably something like out one left, out one right, something like that maybe. Okay, uh, and then there's also out two left, out two right, because there's two, uh, actually two CD players in the one thing. These are, these are also RCA female. Okay, so that, that is my CD player. And I'm going to take this cell and just merge that together. Okay, there's my CD player. And just so I know that those are all together, I'm going to go ahead and shade that some sort of gray. Okay, so I know that that's all one deal. I would, yes. So now that I've got that and I realize there's a remote on there, I'll say, all right, well, there's also this remote. So there's going to be a remote connection there. And it happens to be a mini DIN 8 female connector. And so that's also going to become gray because that's part of my CD player. Okay. And I'll need to insert some columns here to do the actual remote. So plugging into that mini DIN 8 female would be what? Exactly, a mini DIN 8 male. And that mini DIN 8 male would be soldered to some sort of cable, right? So we're going to say it's a remote cable. And on the other end of that, Cable it would be another mini DIN 8 connector, right? Mini DIN 8 female connector. Okay. And now we can start talking about the remote. So on the remote, we would have a mini DIN 8. Actually, this would be a male, wouldn't it? And this would be a female. And it would be called, it would be a label on that that says remote. And that would be connected to CD remote. And that would be one device, that gray. Now, if it's a cable where you could hold the entirety of that cable in your hand, like you could pick it up and walk away with it, then you make the label red. <laughs> Okay. The word itself. Just the word. Okay. So that all the red things mean that's something that I need to make sure I take with me to the sh from the shop. It's a cable that, because in your system, there could be cables that you have to bring, and there could be cables that are running through walls that you, have, that you cannot access. And you need to know about the ones you need to bring because they're not already there. Okay, so you make those ones red. You might even choose to make them bold. And some people like to make bold the actual name of each device, so like CD player and CD remote. Okay, um, so let's see if I can skip ahead here a little bit. Eventually, this will connect to a mixing console. Uh, so let's just do this. I'm going to say. It's a Yamaha M7CL, and there's going to be an output connector on there called Omni 14. And that's an XLR male. Okay. Now, Connected to that would be an XLR female, right? And it would have a label on it that says, in this case, it's it's a little label on the tail, on the, on the connector itself, on the cable connector, and it's actually labeled mono out. That's just what it says on it. It's the cable. It says that. Okay. And then, interesting enough, this goes into what's to a snake. If it then goes up in the other end of the snake, soldered into a patch bay. Okay. So this would be, we'll call this the house snake. Let's 
So we'll make this gray. And that house snake ultimately shows up, it turns into a patch bay. And But the other end of it is going to be another XLR It would be an XLR male, but there's going to be a label. So on the patch bay there will be another mono out label and then an XLR male. Okay. And then maybe over the top here I'll merge this and say this will be my patch bay. So booth patch. Okay. Uh, now, skipping ahead a little bit, there's a connector on that patch panel, another connector on that same patch bay that is represents the input of a power amplifier. All right, so there's a whole bunch of connectors on that wall. Some of them come from the mixing console, some of them go out to the amp room, some of them represent connectors on a wall out on the stage somewhere. So there's a whole bunch of connectors all in there. Okay? So there's another one, another connector on there that represents the input of one of the amplifiers. And we want to connect into that. So it's going to be an XLR female. And this is probably going to be amp 1. It'll probably say amp 1 in on it. Okay? Uh, so that's and that's part of the patch bay as well. So I'll say this will also be a booth patch. Now there's going to be a cable that I'm going to put in between there. Right? I'm going to pick up an XLR cable and I'm going to connect those two things together in the patch bay. So this will be an XLR female and this will be an XLR male and this will be patch cable. And I'm going to make that red because I need to make sure that I have one of those if there's not already one up there. Okay. Now, patch bays are blue. Okay. Blue. So ultimately, you could have a whole bunch of these, right, in the patch bay. You'd have like several of these connectors. And you'd have other, you know, this would be group one out, so on and so forth. There, so there'd be a whole bunch in this patch bay, and you would be showing what connects to what. Same deal here. You'd have a bunch of them. Okay. And you'd have a bunch of patch cables that goes in between each thing. So this would be a part that you might spin out into a separate thing and then print it out and stick it on the patch bay. So if, if somebody goes up and messes with it, you have some sort of thing that shows what connects to what. Right? All right, mono connects to amp one in, group one connects to amp two, right? And then you figure all that out, because so that's going to be a lot of cables all at one spot. Okay. Um, now, coming out of that is going to be what we would call house wire. The house wire is the sort of cabling that runs in a wall inside of conduit. And you, you usually can't do anything about that. It is what it is. Uh, so there's nothing special about it. You just need to know that that's what's happening. Now, the other end of that is going to be what would you think? XLR. Yeah, there's going to be an XLR, exactly. There's going to be an XLR mail connector on the end of that. Interesting enough, I just happen to know this. There's a label on that XLR mail. And it says amp one in. <laughs> or something like that. You'd have to go up and look and see what it exactly says. Alright, and it's gonna connect to what? Yes, an XLR female. You're getting it. And that XLR female is going to be attached to what? The amp, right? So this would be amp one. And and this would be, yeah, so in one or something like that, or amp A or whatever it is. 
Um, so there would be a label and then the actual AMP. So I'll call this AMP A because really that when on that particular patch bay it would say AMP 1 and that's really AMP channel 1, not necessarily the physical amplifier. So um, it'll say whatever it says. Okay. Um, and that AMP is going to have a connector on the other end of it, which would be what, would you think? Could be an NL4, could be what we call a binding post, which would be, you know, for like a banana connector or just bare wire on it. It could be, you know, kind of depends. Um, let's assume for now that it's an NL4, just for fun, okay? So this would be out one, and then it's going to be an NL4. Now, which will get slightly confusing. The NL4 connectors, there are two sorts of NL4 connectors. There's the cable connector and there's the panel connector. Okay. Now, the cable connector, technically, according to Neutrick, they call that the F, the NL4F, C. NL4 female cable connector. I don't understand how that's a female, but uh, and then the panel connector is called an NL4MP, NL4 male panel connector. Now, to further confuse things, they have started to make an NL4MC, male cable connector, which looks like the panel connector, but it's a barrel you stick on the end of the cable. So that you can continue basically yeah on the cable without so it gets slight it's very confusing so my advice to you don't get caught up in whether it's a male or a female just call it by its model number okay, okay? so the model number of that connector on the back of that amplifier is going to be an NL4 MP <laughs> Male panel connector. So that's the model. If you wanted to buy one of these things, you would call up the dealer and say, I need a bag full of NL4 MPs, and he'd send you the panel connectors that go on. Okay? Uh, now, plugging into that would be an NL4 FC, exactly. Now, so this, this whole th contraption here would get gray, because that's a whole piece of equipment there. All right, that was all those five cells, OK? Uh, now, this NL4FC is going to have a little bit of house wire on it. And that house wire is going to ultimately show up on, interesting enough, a patch panel. OK, so there's a amp patch and this is going to be um, usually we label them an LS no this would be no this would be amp one or something like that amp out one or something like that. it's whatever it says okay and that's gonna have an NL4 MP on it now that whole contraption is going to be blue because it's patch bay, right? And then we've got an NL4 FC and a patch cable and another NL4 FC. That patch cable is going to be red. That's going to connect to an NL4 MP, which has a label something like LS. 35, which would represent loudspeaker connection number 35 somewhere out in the theater. There would be a box on a wall somewhere that does that. And this would also be amp patch. Therefore, these would be blue. There would be a bit of house wire here going through a conduit. It's going to run into a panel somewhere on a wall, and that panel is going to say LS. 35, and it's going to have an NL4 
MP on it. Now, wall plates are some sort of lavender color or light purple. Okay. Yeah, something like that. All right. You with me so far? And then you'd have an NL4FC with a cable and an NL4FC that would then go into an NL4MP that would be attached to a loudspeaker. Right? And that loudspeaker with its connector and everything would be great. Uh, <clears throat> now there would be some sort of interconnecting going on here between the CD player and the mixing console. And ultimately, I could merge these down and make a whole big mixing console. Here's, here's a bit of advice. The patch plot is, just, is not a spreadsheet version of your system diagram. Okay, so you don't need to make it flow the same way. It doesn't need to look the same way. Um, this is just about one thing connecting to another thing. Okay, so don't try to do like curvy cells and things dropping down and all that. It's not necessary. Okay. Uh, so that's the basic idea. We got a few minutes. I can take you in there up to the room again and just talk you through a little bit some of the mechanics of how you might do this. Because now what you're going to do is you're going to do a patch plot of this system you've drawn. Okay? And you got a week to do that now. Any questions so far? Okay. Alright, so I'll stop the video and then we can...